Yes. Okay, good morning to everyone from Istanbul. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Rosmet for this opportunity uh, to sharing our experiences about Pronavi. And I think it's very important, especially with uh, new devices, uh, such meetings give uh, us this opportunity to share our experiences. And that's, uh, I will, I will um, show you two of my cases. I have been using Pronavi for a couple of months. I have tried it in many cases and, and mostly we were very successful. But these two cases are very challenging cases and I want to show some important points about Bronavi and this case. And first of all, this is a long RCA CTO case. And as you will appreciate, it's more than 20 millimeters length and it's classified, heavily classified lesion. Uh, the distal of the RCA is filling from both from the bridge collaterals and also from the left uh, system. It's coming from the LAD. And as you will appreciate, the uh, engagement of the guiding catheter is not very perfect at the situation because the lesion is very proximal of the RCA and it's very classified. Um, uh, excuse me, Dr. Junit. Uh, yeah. Your, your you point the... is, uh, is um, not moving. Yeah. Okay. Let's start again. Mm. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Great. Please continue. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. And uh, let me uh, repeat my presentation. This is a long RCA CTO case. It's more than 20 millimeters. It's a calcified lesion. The distal of the RCA is filling from both from the bridge collaterals and also from the left septals. And as you'll appreciate, the, the big, one of the biggest problems with the case is the engagement of the guiding catheter is not perfect. The, the CTO is very proximal and it's... Uh, even the, the, the lesion is uh, even in the ostium of the RCA. So it's a very problematic for uh, the setting of the catheter. But thankfully, we have very good international septal collaterals. As you will see from the right panel, we have international septal collaterals. But mostly we start our cases integrately. And in this case, we had some hope of uh, doing the case integrately. But even the, from the start of the case, you see uh, there were some staining and there was some staining in the ostium of the RCA. And also, I think that was a dissection which was extending to the art root uh, of the uh, RCA part. Uh, but we, we tried a few minutes with um, the, the guiding, the micro catheter was Mamba. Uh, we took a powerful micro catheter for the anti way and the wire was the ultimate ghost tree. And we made some progress. But as you will appreciate from the movements of the wire, tip of the wire, uh, we couldn't make it through the still. And we took an injection from the contralateral left system. And as you see, the wire is completely out of the uh, architecture of the right coronary artery. And also we had some dissection in the ostium, so we moved to the uh, retrograde way because, as I said, we had some uh, hopefully uh, international septal collaterals. For retrograde way, we start with the fine cross micro 150 fine cross, and the wire was also, uh, I think it was Samurai RC. It's Boston's retrograde wire. We have been using this frequently these days. And the wire did its job easily. It could uh, catch the channel. You will see from the right panel. And just a few minutes of uh, work, we could manage to get to the PDA with the wire. And, and after that, even the Samurai RC could make it to the distal cap. As you see, it was really easy. But the problem was uh, the channel was a bit uh, small channel and the fine cross could not cross from the channel. It was at the uh, proximal part, it was stuck, it didn't move more. And as you will see, the guide wire is yeah, disengaging from the left system. It was really challenging. And then we tried uh, some ballooning 
uh, we took Artemis 1.0 balloon for septal ballooning. It was a bit distally, maybe it was a bit, I think, uh, septocardial collateral, but, but we did some ballooning 1.0 balloon, uh, Artemis 1.0 balloon. But even after that, the, the microcatheter did not cross from the septal channel. It was a very challenging case. And then we, we had a uh, Pronavi microcatheter with us in our toolbox, and we decided to try an, a chance for a new microcatheter. And as you will see from the video, it's navigating from the septal channel easily. It did cross and it did reach the distal cap very easily. It was very, uh, it was a surprise for us. We weren't ex ex expecting such an easy crossing of the microcatheter, but it did. And then we had a microcatheter in the distal cap. It was Pronavi, and we, but also we, uh, we had a problem. We had to cross to CTO. It wasn't an easy one. Um, we tried several wires, ultimate cross three, and uh, the guy a second, and also uh, Gladius, I guess Gladius, but we couldn't manage to reach the ostium of the RCA. And then we tried, um, integrate the, we, we decided to make some work from the integrate lead. We tried to make knuckle wire to make some subintimal, subintimal space to uh, connect the wires. Uh, but unfortunately, at this point, the patient uh, had a ventricular fibrillation event and we defibrillated him and he was stable. But during this time, we lost all our setup, unfortunately. And Although the patient was stable, uh, we postponed the operation because it took uh, two, three hours to reach that point. And um, we, we uh, postponed the operation for next stage. But I think we have learned a lot from this case. And uh, I guess we can use Pronavi for septal channels. And, and I, I guess many people use Fancros as uh, uh, first microcatheter for septal channels. But in this case, Fancros could not cross from the septal channels, but Pronavi uh, could make it easily. I think it was very uh, educating case for us. The second case is an also an RCA, CTO case. Um, the distal part is filling from the, both from the left collaterals with uh, septals, distal septals, and also from the right one. The CTO, as you'll appreciate, the CTO is not a very long CTO. Very, maybe we can uh, define the situation as functional CTO. But the problem is the RCA is very tortuous. There are lots of bands in the RCA and also it's very calcified. And even from the beginning, you can appreciate the, the guide catheter is not sitting very well. And, and with this case, we didn't uh, decide to take AL1 like the case before because we have a significant costume in the ostium of the RCA as you will appreciate from the left panel. So it may cause it. Uh, it might cause a dissection in the ostium, and it would also affect the rest of the case. So first of all, we took a, a Judkins right catheter, and the first plan, the first of our plan, was to uh, navigate through the, the side branch and an anchor from that branch that would increase our support during the case. But unfortunately, we could not reach that side branch. We could reach with the wires. We, uh, we put our wires to the distal uh, branch, but unfortunately, none of our balloons could make it to the branch. So we changed our plan and we directly start to do CTO without anchoring. But uh, as you see, the guide uh, support is not very perfect. With this case, we directly started with Pronavi. Uh, this is a non-tapered one. Unfortunately, we do not have the tapered one in Turkish market. We just have the non-tapered one, 150. And the guide wire is Fielder XDA. And it's very um, tortuous RCA. And we thought that Fielder XDA could make this. And as you see, it was very, it was very successful in reaching the distal part. And this part is the CTO. Actually, there are two, three different uh, critical lesions, but the Fidelix DA was very successful. But maybe we couldn't advance Pronavi uh, very far from the proximal part of the RCA, but it, I, I think it gives some support, not very well, but it gives some support. And as you will see from the right panel, we could make it 
to the distal part of the RCA. And as you see, we are in a small side branch. Then we directed the wire, the RCA, to the distal of the RCA. So we were sure about the position of our wire. We were in the distal RCA. Uh, we managed to cross the CTO and the lesions, uh, even to the PDA and the PL with the wire. But the problem was, the, as you see, it's a very tortuous RCA uh, and very calcified one. And Pronavi could not cross from the RCA, this RCA. And we were expecting this problem also from the start of the case. And uh, we take out, we took out the Pronavi microcatheter. Uh, we took out with, with um, anchor uh, trapping, as you see from the right panel. Uh, our setup was six French, both in the right and the left system. And thankfully, we uh, could manage to trap out the microcatheter with the six French with balloons. With, um, with some microcatheters, we may face some problems, but with Pronavi, it did work very well. We could take out our Pronavi easily with the um, uh, tracking. Then we took our guide liner to improve our support. And as you see, it's not easy to advance uh, our uh, guide liner. And we use inch one technique to advance our guide liner. We took a two or balloon approximately. And then we advanced our guide liner to a point. But unfortunately, it did not go from that point. And we took one of Artemis balloon. Uh, and as you know, it's one of the lowest profile CTO balloons. But unfortunately, it did not cross from the mid part of the RCA. We, we did some ballooning here, but unfortunately, it couldn't cross even with the support of the guidelines. So we were in a very desperate uh, situation. We had uh, the, uh, we had the wire in the distal part, but we had an uncrossable, uh, balloon uncrossable, microcatheter uncrossable situation. Even with the guide liner, we couldn't cross our materials distally. So we had very few uh, options and we decided to take Taurus microcatheter. Taurus microcatheter is an old microcatheter, in fact, but it's very useful for such cases, very calcified, very long lesions. It's also uh, modifying the black, and we took the turns, and it's a very talkable microcatheter. You will uh, turn it uh, contralaterally, um, contraclockwise, like 18 to 20 times, and by this way, it's as you see, it's advancing. At some point, at least, it crossed the point where we couldn't cross with the balloons. And as you will see from the right panel, it's going down. But you must be very, very patient. You must move very slowly because as you see, as the uh, tonus get down distally, our guiding catheter is going back and we may lose everything. So we did everything very slowly. But finally, eventually we could make it to the distally. As you see from the left panel, we crossed the CTO, we could managed to reach the distal part of the RCA. And then and we changed our wire, which was filter XDA. It did very well, but it's not safe to leave filter XDA in the distal part of the RCA because it can cause some distal perforations. And also we put a cyan blue extra support wire, which can also help us to uh, carry our gear to the distal part of the RCA. And it also helped us. And after Tornus, and we had opportunities to take our balloons distally. Also, we have a um, Scion Blue Access Support Wire, which was very also supportive for us. Uh, but, it, uh, but even the rest of the case was not easy. We did uh, ballooning from even from 1.0, 1.5 uh, RTMS, then 2.0 balloons. Uh, and all of them can only, could only cross with the support of the guide liners. But thankfully, we could cross our, our materials distally. And, and then we did a wedge balloon, which is a scoring balloon of the Brosmet, that also helped us to uh, improve the artery. And finally, we could make our stents to distally with the help of the guide liner. And this is the final result. It was a very, very challenging case. It took uh, like two hours to do the case. But uh, finally, we could reach 
just leave it all our, our equipments. My take home messages are, I think the program we may play a key role in the CTO cases, even for challenging cases, as you see in our first case, a retrograde septal case, and maybe it can replace very well known micropathers like fine course or maybe caravan. But there are still cases which Pronavi or any other micropathologist will need help of other dedicated devices like TORS. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Juniet. Thank you for the dedicated presentation and uh, high press of Pronavi Microcaster. Okay, please, Dr. Tishofetis and Dr. Lumendo, do you have any comments to aid? For, for discussions. Very, very good presentation. I like very much these uh, challenging cases. And this is very good um, nation of, uh, it's not only the microcatheters, the only devices and the only weapons to CTO. It's a very, a very spread um, installation of devices that we can use. And congratulations for your expertise and all the devices for CTO. Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Raimondo. Very nice cases, very demanding and challenging cases. Congrats for the presentation for the cases as well. I would like to ask for the first case, uh, which uh, Pronavi MacArthur was, but the, the one that went so easily from the septals? Non-tapered one. Unfortunately, we, we don't have the tapered one in the market, so uh, I was, I, I'm really curious about the tapered one. I think I think this one has replaced fine cross in my uh, daily practice, but if the tapered one comes, I think I think we can use it in epicardial ones. I'm very curious about that. Yeah, but it went uh, in a very smooth very way. Very, very... It, was very it was really surprising. Fantastic process, process. Fantastic, uh, fantastic move. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. we were a little bit jealous about that. So <laughs> having <laughs> cases every day. So it was it was really fantastic uh, movement of the microcatheter. And uh, this uh, was very nice point uh, for us as well. And uh, another point is that I think that uh, even the, the tapering uh, microcatheter, I can have a very good uh, injections through this, uh, through this uh, microcatheter because in many cases we, I ha we have to do that. And the, there are some microcatheters that we cannot, we cannot inject as well, uh, very well uh, to see the distal vessel. And uh, for the second case, uh, it's, it's for sure that we, we must have in our uh, cath lab uh, every weapon because uh, you never you never know what's going to be next step and what's uh, what's going to be your need and of course uh, we have to be prepared and familiar with uh, every uh, useful tool and uh, of course there's no we cannot have just one microcatheter that's uh, that's the meaning of this yeah. yeah thank you yes thank you okay is any more questions in, in, in order your expertise what is your uh, first line choice of microcatheter in very, very highly calcification? I think mostly I start with Corsair Pro, X, uh, Pro XS, uh, which is a torqueable microcatheter. And if it doesn't work, we mostly take for Turnpike Gold. And, uh, but mostly, if, if Corsair doesn't work, we jump directly to Tornos. We have tried this in maybe three or four cases, and it, it worked well in all the cases. It's really challenging to use. You must get used to use it, but it's very useful for most of the cases, especially for classified long, and such cases like tortuous arteries, it, it helps us a lot. I think everyone needs um, tornus in their cat tap, in their toolbox, and uh, get used to use it. Okay. It's very useful. Thank you. 